talking a little bit about Juma. Uh, I understand you're the new 3.4 release manager. Yep, I'll be the release leader for Juma 3.4. How did you get so lucky? We decided in the production leadership team that we wanted to share the responsibilities of that role and not put any one person under too much pressure. We kind of put it up for a vote to see who'd be interested. And 3.4, I expressed some interest in being able to be a part of. As luck would have it, I'll be able to lead the 3.4 release. Do the release managers rotate? Is that part of the idea that you build successors? So the idea with the Joomla release leader system is not to have any one person always being in that position. It's, it's too taxing. The production leadership team would like to see a rotation of those release leaders to, to share that burden. So with each release, we hope to see someone else take that role. Some things that you would like to do differently with this release. I think with each release of Joomla, the benefits to being the release leader allow you to focus on those areas that you're particularly interested in. So sure, there will be sleepless nights when the burden falls on you to make sure things go as planned. But the flip side to that is you're able to dedicate some time into those things that interest uh, you and how they're going to impact the community with each release. One of the things that's come up recently is a change in development strategy about how we name our releases. Terms like SCS and LTS and .5 becoming history. It's been a major shift in Joomla development strategy in how we name our releases and when we declare them to be stable. We've kind of learned from our history and what we've done in the past and decided that it would be in the best interest of the community and based on the feedback that we've received from the community to kind of drop some of the nomenclature that we've been tied to previously with 0.5 being the stable release. Instead, we're looking at each as a series. So we have the two series and the three series. And within that series, each release will be a stable release. One of the major points of the development strategy was we no longer will be introducing backwards compatibility breaks within a series. So we're shifting to more of a semantic versioning approach. And as such, we won't see any breaks in backwards compatibility until we get to the next major release. So Joomla 4 would introduce the potential for those. This provides a lot more stability to the user. And in doing so, there is no longer the need to adhere to a strict 0.5 as the stable release within the series. Each release within that series would be stable because there would be no backwards compatibility breaks. And so as you view it today, we're already at the 0.5. The, the Juma 3.3 is Absolutely. the LTS release and, and will be LTS from here on. That's correct. That's what's really exciting because immediately you can begin using Juma 3.3 and that is a stable release that you can build your production level code on. Series 3 will be supported as long as it maintains under active development and then for a two-year period beyond that. And that can be a bit confusing because originally, when you're in an old mindset of 3.1 to 3.2 to 3.5, then 3.5 went directly to 4, where we were in back into a beta stage. And now we have the opportunity to have as many 3.5 whatever releases as we need. So we no longer have to be stuck at 3.5. We will be having a 3.6 or a 3.7. We'll continue developing within the 3 series on a stable system until we see enough need to have a backwards compatibility break that we move to Joomla 4. You see a trend emerging for what's coming in the 3 series. Are we heading towards something that's uh, a little bit more nimble? I, this is where you're getting into an area that I'm particularly passionate about. We have significant opportunity as we move forward to focus our efforts with the CMS. And one of the things that I think we're going to see is a focus on simplicity and a focus on making sure that we're as flexible a CMS as possible and making sure that Joomla is the best CMS. To do that involves more than just adding features. And to date, we have made significant improvements in Joomla through adding additional features. And 3.4 is this turning point. We're beginning a transition. Yeah. We're not going to be adding more features at a rapid pace, but instead focusing on what we have as a CMS and refining that. 
and making it a better product for the users. And that may involve reducing the size of the CMS and taking things out of the core distribution and making them additional add-ons that can be added on by the user when they need it. To me, that's extremely exciting. And that's where we're going to see true potential of the Joomla CMS really begin to take shape. So at Joomla 3 Series site a year from now, what does that feel like? In a perfect world, in a world where I envision what Joomla 3 will be in a year, we're going to be very lightweight. I'm not going to be encumbered with extensions and components modules that I don't need on my site. I'll only have those pieces that I want or that my client wants, and that's going to give me a much more stable system that I don't have to maintain as much code and allows me to quickly implement new things because I don't have to worry of all the possible interactions that there would be. It's really where it gets exciting because now you have a perfect system that does just what you need to do without all the extra weight that you're not really using. Because of being a real estate for 3.4, I can talk a bit about what we're doing with that. And I mentioned a bit of this in a talk I gave earlier. I'm extremely excited because we are going to be beginning the transition towards a lighter, more flexible CMS. And with 3.4, we're doing that with a very concentrated and careful approach to decoupling web links from the CMS. So we'll be taking it out of the core distribution and moving it to an optional add-on. It's not going to break anyone's site because it's still available. We don't take it away from anybody if they're currently using it um, or if it's currently on their site, but we'll be taking it out of the, the new installations. So if you want web links, it's only a click away. You can download it from the install feature within the back end of Joomla. So it's still there if you want it, but you don't have to be encumbered with it if you're not going to be using it. And that is, that's exciting because now we're starting to see real life application for how we're going to go about trimming our code base and making it as flexible and as lightweight as we possibly can and still maintain all the power of that Joomla CMS. So the idea is to make these more optional so that people don't have to wait down their code? Right. So we don't want to make people have to have a bulky CMS with mm -hmm. stuff they're not going to be using. And so we're going to start making sure that we give people the option. If there's a better option for web links than what we've traditionally used, they can use that. Uh, in the future, I'm not going to name names, but if there are other components that are in core, we'll remove those if there are better options that people can install direct. Um, the whole goal being we want to give the power to the user. We want to give them the option to pick what they need in the CMS and not force things on them. And that's that's really what the heart of it is, is making sure that we're flexible, making sure that it's stable, and that it's fully supported ongoing. Why did you pick on Weblinks? I wouldn't have thought that was a very popular extension to be using. We decided that Weblinks would be a good opportunity to start with because there isn't a lot of implementation of it. First of all, we don't see a lot of interactions with other parts of the system. So it's an easier one to extract, an easier one to build a use case from. Uh, because there is quite a bit that has to go on beyond just removing it from the installation. We're going to have to set up a private repository for it, which will be available to everyone, but it will be outside of the CMS repository. Then we're going to have to figure out how to set that up within the Joomla extension directory so it's easy to uh, access and return to your site if you want it. Um, so based on a variety of factors, we felt like it would be a good starting point to, to use as a use case. Also, a, like a technical proof of concept. To exactly. say, you figure out how to surgically excise that one, you can do the rest. Exactly. Now, by moving it into its own repository, does that let it grow at its own pace and so it's not encumbered by the release system? You got it. So now, with Weblinks in its own repository, it can be have pull requests submitted against it. It can have new versions released of it as it reaches a stable point for each of its own releases. It's no longer dependent on waiting until the entire CMS is ready to move up a level. It allows us even greater flexibility from a code standpoint to improve each individual piece at its own pace. And hopefully we'll see increased contributions as a result. Another fact that's important to note is we're not doing it just with existing extensions. We're looking at this as the model to use for all future as well, because we're certainly going to want to continue to develop the CMS and the different features it offers, but instead of just automatically adding it into the core installation, we're going to add it through the same mechanism of 
a standalone extension that you can easily install. And so it, it may be one of these core supported or whatever we end up calling it. it. It may be one of those extensions that can be added in, but it won't necessarily be automatically included in every version. So what else do you see on the horizon? So one of the things that we've had a lot of feedback on is how we're going to integrate the Joomla framework within the CMS. And yeah. is this going to come full circle? And are we going to see the framework powering the CMS? Um, it's a pretty controversial topic. A lot of people are concerned that it's going to be uh, encumbering to the framework, that we're going to slow down development of the framework because now we're having to adhere to CMS standards again. And that's really not the case. The way that we see it working best is that CMS will be able to benefit from the progression that the framework is on. And so the CMS will choose what it's going to include from the framework and use it at the CMS pace. It doesn't mean the framework is going to adhere to the CMS pace. The CMS, rather, will choose what it can afford to use from the framework. Does that make sense? It's a slight shift in thinking. It's not the framework looking at the CMS, but the CMS looking at the framework. So at any particular release point for the CMS, it's going to take the latest framework version at that time and bake it in and and ignore up other releases on the framework. It may so do that. It, skip some. it may skip some. Uh, another key thought is that with the framework and, and the beauty of where we're at with these packages is it doesn't have to be a lump sum. You don't right. have to take the entire framework. We've already integrated a little bit of the framework already. Not very much, but just a little bit in the CMS. And the goal would be incremental. We don't want to try to push the whole framework into the CMS or the CMS try to consume the whole framework, but rather allow it to take advantage of various bits and pieces from the framework as it reaches development in its own life cycle. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what's going to be happening with the various bootstrap releases and how that impacts the CMS? The bootstrap cycle in their release strategy has caused us a bit of um, confusion with how we handle that. We chose to integrate with Bootstrap when they were at 2.3, and we integrated with them pretty heavily. We were shocked at their three release to be so vastly different in their code base. Not backwards compatible, huh? They were completely not backwards compatible. Shame on them. <laughs> well, they did use a different major number, though. They, they did, they did, so, so technically they followed Sembear. Okay. But as a result, it left us in a bit of a predicament. We do want to look at how we're going to be going about that. And it's on the docket. I'll be sharing a release strategy for future releases upcoming on the developer.joomla.org website. In that, you'll be able to see by number 35, 36, 37, 38, and so on, various things we want to accomplish with each release. And one of those releases is dedicated specifically to handling the issue with Bootstrap. We look at the possibilities of implementing a layer in between, a buffer in between, so the user can choose which version of Bootstrap they want, and this buffer layer will be able to interpret and apply to the CMS. And that's really what we see as the perfect solution, but there's going to be a lot of talk and time spent in making sure that it's a workable solution. So the idea with that is that if all of a user's extensions were finally up to Bootstrap 3, that core could go to Bootstrap 3, exactly. and if they don't have all that compatibility, they're going to stay at 232. Exactly. And there, obviously there's going to be this time when some are two, three, and some are three, and it's going to be a difficult situation. That's going to be up to individual developers to move their code to the latest version and to keep their code up to date. For 3.4, do you th see things that a developer needs to worry about for their extensions? Is their target moving in any way? Or do they have any new API features that they would want to be implementing? 3.4 will not focus too much on implementing developer heavy features. We will be doing some things with Composer, but it's not going to affect third party extension developers. We're setting the stage for what we're going to be able to do in the future with it. But as of right now with 3.4, there's going to be very minimal set of stuff done for developers. 3.4 is really also where we're going to start seeing some change. We're not wanting to offer massive releases anymore. We want to try to shift our focus to doing shorter release times that are more focused on very specific issues. If you look at the notes for 3.4 and what we're looking to accomplish, it's a short list, but so is the turnaround time. We want to see a two-month turnaround. The next thing you know, we'll be looking at 3.5. So rather than setting 
an unknown date or a six month date out, we're setting shorter dates and shorter goal sets. And so by doing so, because we're not introducing backwards compatibility changes, we're able to continue progressing forward at a very quick pace and produce stable code at each time. Now, does that create concerns for site owners to see so many updates where they used to only see them twice a year? See, and that's where it's really cool. Before, you would be concerned at each update because you don't know what's going to break and you don't know how it's going to change your code base. But because of the way that we've structured things now, where the only time you'll see those breaks are on major releases, you can upgrade to each minor release and expect that you will have zero problems because they're always going to be backwards compatible within the release. So you have the confidence that somebody can one-click on a production site and you know, as long as they got a good backup that they should never have to use it, right? It's a scary thought, but yes, that's the goal. And that's Excellent. the plan.